It is Money Monday, and it's never too soon to start teaching our kids about money and taking the necessary steps to position them for long-term stability and success. I totally agree, and here to help us prepare, plan, and save wisely for your children's financial future, please welcome the host of the So Money Podcast, Farnoosh Tarabi. Yeah. Good to see you and good to have Great you on to here. See you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's start with this. According to the Council for Economic Education, less than 50% of states, this was interesting, a call for high school students mm -hmm. to take a required personal finance course, and that's despite dealing with their own money daily. Why is it important for parents to prioritize and start early? Yeah, you know, I talk to my guests on my podcast every day. What's the most important lesson you learned about money? And they'll say, oh, I learned it when I was a kid, or I didn't learn it when I was a kid. When we're young, our community, those who take care of us, you know, there's an opportunity here to teach us about money. Um, we don't learn it in the schools, as the survey points out. We just test them without giving them any of the education. But my thing is, like, you don't have to sit down with your kid with a financial textbook. Kids learn through our modeling. So when you're having conversations about money, when you're shopping, when you're trying to save money on something, bring in your kid. When they're teenagers, bring them into your budgeting. Show them how you're paying your bills. They will understand, and if they have a curiosity for it, you know, encourage it. Don't shun them. Don't say, oh, we don't talk about money or money is rude. That's actually verbatim things that people in this country believe. Be the opposite. Be someone who's like, you know what, this is an interesting conversation. Let's talk about it. If you don't know the answer, say, I'll come back to you. But just encourage them to be curious. As parents, I think we worry about everything, but especially about money for your kids and their futures, like all these things to save for. Mm -hmm. How do you start setting them up? And you have some tips for yeah. us. In particular, with their credit score, you say adding them as an authorized user, yes. as a minor on your credit card? <laughs> when you card? use the word minor, it <laughs> sounds so shady. Like, wait a um, minute. Yeah, is no, that's the first step, though? Well, it can be a great step in building credit health for your child. Think about it. One of the most important ingredients in credit health is your longevity of credit usage. How long you've been using credit. Imagine you've been technically using credit since you were like 10 or 11 years old. Now, the strategy you point out is called adding your kid as an authorized user on your credit card. What is this? So. With your credit card company, your credit card issuer, you can go online and add a family member as a authorized user. That family member, your child, gets their own credit card attached to your account, and as you use the credit card and pay off your bills, that credit history gets reported on your credit report as well as the child's. Now, just be sure, because every credit card company has their age requirements. Some have no age requir requirements. Others say the kid has to be at least 16, but just check because imagine starting to build credit as it a lot of us don't do this until we hit college and by then we don't have the literacy hello raise your hand if you <laughs> bought a lot of pizza mm -hmm. and shoes and party stuff with your credit card break trips. Spring yes, break trips. Yes, yes I was about to say that's when the <laughs> yeah. trouble starts because you leave high school and you go off to college and you start getting you know letters from credit card yeah. companies and then the next thing you know you're still paying for a sofa that you bought 10 <laughs> 15 years yeah. ago like, I just have to pay twelve dollars a month <laughs> for the next 80 years yeah, yeah. now real quick uh, those business owners out there you say it's pretty savvy to put them on the payroll put your yes. kids on the payroll uh, making them eligible early for their own Roth IRA. I know. This is going viral in the entrepreneur social media world. If you're following any entrepreneurs, you may have heard them talk about this. What they're doing, a lot of them, the savvy parents, they're putting their kids on their payroll. When my friend told me about this, she, her daughter's seven, I was like, I think that sounds illegal. Like, I don't know. How is this legal? No, my accountant told me as soon as they're sort of like six, seven, eight years old, you can actually technically put them on your business's payroll doing age appropriate things like filing cabinets or holding your phone, you know, while you're doing your TikTok or whatever for your business and you're technically paying them. But why this is important is because when you start to make money, now you're eligible to contribute to a Roth IRA, which in the retirement savings world is like the holy grail. I mean, because it has so many great tax benefits and we know one of the most powerful things with investing is starting young and early. So imagine being eight years old and putting in this year the maximum contribution is 6500 every year until you hit 60. You're talking millions of dollars by the time you have arrived in retirement. Mm. Uh, th the last thing I want to ask you about is for kids heading off to college. Some parents are skipping the dorms and they're yeah. getting condos 
for their kitty kids. Kitty condos. What, what is this yes. strategy? So this strategy, it's the kitty condo strategy. If you have a child going to an out-of-state public university, then of course paying out-of-state tuition, rather than paying the university housing dollars, parents are turning and buying condos, apartments, townhomes, and using that as an investment property, but also now the kid lives in the house and guess what, pays in-state tuition, so you're saving thousands of dollars that way. And then the kid could also be added to the mortgage as a co-borrower, again, continuing to build credit like we talked about earlier. So it's kind of a win-win-win. And as far as like, what do you do when the kid graduates? Some parents decide to keep the home and use it as an investment property. I'm going back to Penn State, my alma mater, this month. Wouldn't it have been nice to like have an apartment Man, 20 years I ago? I would have been in so much trouble. I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> <laughs> you might never leave college. That's the risk. Oh, yeah. Thank well, Brenners, thank you so much You're for welcome. those tips. And be sure to check out the So Money podcast. We will see you again thank soon. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.